Our worship is about to begin, so let us quiet our hearts to receive our word. Awaken 
such love for you that we may know you better than we know ourselves. Inspire our love for others so that our capacity to care, to understand, and to share increases greatly. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now it's time to greet each other, so please stand, wave, say hello, and remain Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So glad y'all are here. Love Divine All loves excelling one from Charles Wesley Hamlet let's sing verses one, two, and four of Love Divine All. shelters, habitat bills, 
and other ministries throughout the conference. And some of it comes back to this area. Uh, during the time I was here, there were grants given to um, Towns County um, Food Bank and to uh, other um, ministries such as Habitat and SAFE and um, the uh, Hope House in Blairsville. The council will make these grants and 100% um, of the money that you give to the homeless offering will be distributed in these grants to, um, to organizations that are serving homeless people. As you can imagine, it's a difficult time for many people uh, right now, and I can't even imagine how the organizations that serve people who are homeless must be struggling right now. So I, uh, I encourage you to help give and um, help us to be able to be part of this, this ministry that serves people all around. Thank you. Thank you, Virginia. I tell you, it's, uh, it was a joy to get to meet uh, Virginia in that capacity. I was at another church and uh, back in that time, is when two tornadoes came through our county. All the publicity in that year went to the tornado that went through Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Ringgold, Georgia, uh, but we got very little publicity, and yet we had uh, severe damage and damage to a school, and one of the things that uh, we took on was the building of two new houses for folks that had decided to give up their insurance payments so they could have food on the table, and of course, when the tornado wiped out their house. They had nothing to uh, be able to rebuild with. This today is a, 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 just a thrill, a joy for me. Uh, not only in uh, being able to see Virginia again and renew that, but David as well. I've been waiting long for this. Um, I teased them that they had to have a year of exile and uh, how long that year was, and I was hoping that instead that the exile lasted even longer. I don't know, you know, COVID has played a role in so many things, but David, Virginia, we are so glad. We, our hearts are full because of your presence with us here today and because you still are part of us. David, you will be my hero, I've said that, and you continue to inspire me as you have recovered to the point where you are. Uh, a man that uh, runs, a man that bicycles, a man that runs with faith and rides with God. I tell you, you are an inspiration. So David, I'm glad, and Virginia, you both, as you come to participate in the life of this church, we welcome you. Would you give them a hand? <laughs> David's retired, so you know that I'm not buttering up. It is out of deep, deep love. And uh, we do. We, our, our hearts are full and welcoming you. As we gather together as the people of prayer, we rejoice in the love that we have among each other and the love that we can share in the world that we give. And so we want to remember those who in their times are struggling, facing difficulties. And so we want to remember Mike Acklin, Sarah Rickey, and others who battle the disease that is still evident among us, those who have lost loved ones we want to remember. And may we pray for the gift of God's love, that this love builds within us, that this, this gift of God is one that we open daily, maybe even several times a day, maybe each hour. We open this gift of love with every opportunity we have as we stand before another. Let us open that gift and share it gladly with others. Let us pray. God, today is a gift of love that you have given to us. And so we celebrate that gift in giving you thanks and praise. God, today is a day that you have made for each and every one of us. And it is in the making that, Lord God, we celebrate with you. As we move forward in this day called Valentine's, may we know more deeply than ever before the gift of your love. May we feel the surrounding joy that you give to your loved ones, to all people. 
that we might gladly share it with others. Oh God, we live in a broken and struggling world. We live in a world that faces illness and violence. May we be the reflection of your love. Lord, may we so seek and desire and pursue the holiness of love that it can't help but to spread and to shine in our own lives. Forgive us, God, when we have, when we have drifted from you, when we have been distracted by the material things of life and thinking that there is happiness and there is love. Remind us again of the wisdom of the ages. That love is found in things of the heart. That love is shared where life is good. Love is shared where life is hard. But where love is shared, hearts are renewed and made new. God, this day, make us so mindful of your great gift in Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the gift and the power of love that he shared. May it so enrich our lives that in the wealth of your great love, we live the life worthy of the calling of Jesus Christ. To know your love, to feel your love, and to share it gladly and richly with others. And so, O oh God, knowing that we do not do this of our own accord, we pray. We pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Happy Valentine's Day. I, uh, I'm wondering, have you, uh, have you ever tried to love somebody? And, you know, we all kind of say, yeah, you know, I've kind of done that. I mean, you know, you teach kids early on, I love you, and, and uh, you want them to say it back, and how wonderful that sounds from your grandkids or your children, they learn that, I love you. And, and then you might find somebody, or friend, or you know, and you might not use the word love, but you know there's a, there's a building affection, and whether it's a brother or sister in Christ, or whether it's a, you know, one that will become, you know, one that will become very special in your life, and you commit to one another, you say you're going to love them, right? I'm building all that up to say, you know, when I, when I met Melanie, you know, I, I decided I was going to love her. I had no idea what I was thinking. I had no idea in really understanding what that word meant. I mean, I said I love you, and she kind of took it like I knew what I was talking about. But my friends, I'm before you today and saying... That, that four-letter word has grown greatly in my understanding and the way it plays out in my life. I've got some scripture that I found. I'm always pretty, you know, between Melanie and I, I've memorized some scriptures. I've found some scriptures. And there were some that just didn't go over very well. But I thought, you know, there's scripture. So I don't know if you've read the scripture yet or not. But I wanted to read some to you. Before you do anything to the one you're sitting next to, you might want to wait till I finish this sermon, okay? I just don't want you to uh, get in trouble before I say anything more. The scripture lessons come from the book of Proverbs, the sayings that we have there, and I want to share a few of them with you. From Proverbs 15, and I'm reading now the New Revised Standard Version. Chapter 15, verse 17 says this, Better is a dinner of vegetables where love is than a fatted ox and hatred with it. Verse seven, chapter 17 says, Better is a dry morsel with quiet than a house full of feasting and strife. From chapter 21, verse 9, it says, It is better to live in a corner of a housetop than in a house shared with a contentious wife. Yeah, I'm not finished yet. Verse 19, It is better to live in a desert land than with a contentious and fretful wife. Okay, I, I, I don't even have to keep going. Let me read another version because you know, you might think, well, you know, it's that's the way that that's worded, you know, and it's that translation. Better is a bread crust shared in love than a slab of prime rib served in hate. And another one. A nagging spouse is like the drip, drip, drip of a leaky faucet. Oh my. Better to live alone in a tumble-down shack than share a mansion with a nagging spouse. Oh, we get inclusive here. That's good. That's probably good, isn't it? Better to live in a tent in the wild than with a cross and petulant spouse. Hmm. 
What does the scripture say? From 1 Thessalonians, we find these words. Paul is writing to the church at Thessalonica, and he is encouraged by the report that he got from Timothy, and he's glad of how that their first encounter is still living and impacting the way they live now. But Timothy had just now come to us from you and has brought us the good news of your faith and love. He has told us also that you also remember us kindly and long to see us just as we long to see you. For this reason, brothers and sisters, during all our distress and persecution, we've been encouraged about you through your faith. For we now live if you continue to stand firm in the Lord. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all the saints. Finally, brothers and sisters, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you learn from us how you ought to live and to please God, in fact, you are doing, you should do so more and more. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, may the gift of your love pour out on each and every one of us today. That we might gladly open that gift that you so freely give that we might share that gift with all. In Christ we pray, amen. I have to admit that it has been in marriage that I have learned the most in, about love. When Melanie and I met at uh, Candler School of Theology back in 1982, it was there that uh, we began to grow in love. We uh, knew immediately after we got married and we were entering the ministry that we wanted uh, to be good at loving and showing that love with others and felt like as a married couple we needed to strengthen our own marriage. And so we took upon ourselves to find out marriage enrichment events as often as we could and participate in them. The first ones led to some of our biggest arguments. And, uh, but finally we found a model that we thought that was a good model for how you are to have people go through a, a marriage enrichment retreat. And so as we went through this model and began to be trainers in this model, uh, we uh, uh, enjoyed every retreat that we did with couples. And it always began with a walk down memory lane. And as we shared that walk down memory lane, it began to remind us of why we fell in love with each other. And we felt like that model was important for all of us to kind of remember why we did what we did as we fell in love and we, we got married. You know, it's questions like, when did you first meet? What were they wearing? What was your first day? What about the first kiss? And you began to get the couple to reminisce about all those significant first in, in the relationship? What was the, the first conversation like? Where, where did you go on that first day? Well, Melanie uh, likes to talk about what she calls our first day. What happened when I was in seminary, the first day, I actually had a, a, a car wreck, and my car was totaled. And so, as a, as a first year student, I relied on other people to drive me, and it just so happened that Melanie had a car, and she was uh, willing, willing to drive. But um, that first date that she likes to tell about is when uh, I really wanted to impress her. We had known each other for about a month and we were falling head over heels and I wanted to take her to the Abbey. The Abbey, I believe, is an old Episcopal church that was turned into a restaurant in, in Atlanta. And uh, it was just a wonderful place, I thought, to be able to take her and uh, impress her. Well, we got there in her car, and I, she let me drive in her car, and, 
And uh, there was a person that came out and wanted to valet the car. And I thought to myself, okay, I need to tip this person. So I tipped this person in grand style. And we walked into this beautiful restaurant and we were escorted up into the balcony and there we overlooked uh, violin and small orchestra playing quietly love songs. And they came and served us all kinds of bread and, and then they brought us the menu and I looked at the menu. I wasn't smart enough to look at the menu before I went there. And I had to confess that, you know, Melanie, I think if we order the cheapest two uh, uh, dinners on this menu, we can get out of here. And so, in fact, she ordered one of the cheaper ones, and I ordered the cheapest menu, uh, on the menu, and I can't remember what they were. It didn't matter, but I remember we were looking at the low-end kind of things. And sure enough, when the bill came due and I pulled out all the money that I thought was plenty of money back in that day and time, Melanie, I don't have enough. <laughs> so Melanie pulls out her dad's credit card that she had for gas money and she pays for our first big official date. Needless to say, her dad really enjoyed keeping that over my head for many years. <laughs> I remember the first time we went out and we were supposed to go with a group of friends to a concert. When Melanie shows up to pick me up, she's the only one in the car. And we go hear Air Supply. If you know about Air Supply, they had nothing but love songs. Lost in Love was one of them. And the line goes, you can't fool me because I've been loving you for so long. Melanie took me to that concert and I teased her relentlessly about the fact that we were supposed to be in a group and now she shows up just herself. Melanie and I have been uh, working in love for a long time and I always tried to get things right, but I had to wait for at least nine months to make it official. Even though she had bought her wedding dress when she'd gone shopping with another friend who was gonna get married, and I had already bought the ring after just a few months of knowing her. I had to wait because I made it wanted to look official. And so after nine months of knowing Melanie and after the time of our first date, I asked her. But what she remembers is that her birthday was just a few weeks before. And on her birthday, I gave her a box and she opened it knowing it was a ring and thinking that it was going to be that ring. It was just one of her birthstone rings and some earrings. It was oval for the month of June, but she walked away and told her friends that she was crushed because I had given a ring at the wrong time. That just goes to show you how much I needed to learn. But later that month, I knew that I was going to give her the ring and I knelt down on one knee and said, will you marry me? To this day, she doesn't remember any of that. When we walk down memory lane, it's amazing how different we remember the things that was only, you know, about 37 years ago. But nonetheless, it has been something that we have tried to grow in love through the years. But I can't help but to remember how I was when we first met. So in light of the scripture that I read about a nagging wife and how I sometimes reminded Melanie of that, I've got to share with you a song. And the words that would have easily come to mind during that time, and I only wish I would have heard it back then because I might have been a better husband earlier on. The title of this song is Things You Don't Say to Your Wife. Here are the words of that song. Hey honey, have you gained some weight in your rear end? That dress you wear reminds me of my old girlfriend. And where do you get those shoes? They look pretty lame. Would you stop talking because I'm trying to watch the game? If you're a man who wants to live a long and happy life, these are the things you don't say to your wife. I planned a hunting trip next week on your birthday. 
I didn't ask you because I knew that it'd be okay. Go make some dinner now as I watch my fishing show. I taped it over an old wedding video. If you're a man who wants to live a long and happy life, these are the things you don't say to your wife. Your cooking is okay, but not like mother makes. The diamond ring I bought you is a fake. Your eyes look puffy, dear. Are you feeling ill? Happy anniversary, I bought you a treadmill. If you're a man who wants to live a long and happy life, these are the things you don't say to your wife. If you're a man who doesn't want to be killed with a knife, these are the things you don't say to your wife. It would have been good had I heard that song early on. It would have been good that I understood that love keeps your mouth shut sometimes. And here I recognize the fact that love is something that does grow. And love is something that is a shared expression of the God living inside of you. Love is an action more than a feeling. Love is learned and love grows. Love is what strengthens each other in struggle and difficulty. Love binds our hearts, not just people who are married, but love binds our hearts as brothers and sisters. Love binds our hearts as the family of God. What was so precious is that Tina, in the, with the children's activity, asked them, what is love to you, and, and who, who is it that you love? And, of course, immediately, Mom and Dad and Mimi and Grandpa and, and my, you know, my family. I love my family. And I love my pets, you know. I love my dog. And I thought, you know, isn't that where we all begin? Isn't that what's wonderful? And it dawned on me again is the reason we're so quickly to say that those are the people that we love. is because they love us. And I, it makes it so difficult when you begin to think about when Jesus says, yes, even, even the Gentiles do that. Even those who, you know, they, they can love each other back and forth. But Jesus goes so far as to say to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Is that's the kind of love that he's talking about. And maybe I needed to hear that even earlier when I began to hear when Melody and I were having one of those great discussions and the voices were raised and I heard a voice of God. Stephen, she loves you. You can trust her. That's not how I was feeling at the time. That's not how I was thinking that this was going to go forward. But I heard from God, God's gift of love and how it is one that does strengthen our binds together. The apostle Paul had a young disciple named Timothy and Timothy was coming back from the church of Thessalonica and he returned with great joy because of the love and faith that he found in the church at Thessalonica. And he brought that news back to Paul and it lifted Paul up because Paul was going through prison at the time. Paul was one that was in, in struggle and Paul was in distress, but that was not near as much as in his life because the, the joy of his story lifted him up. He said, may, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as my love abounds for you. And this is what pleases God. You know, when you and I think about our Christian faith, what is it that pleases God? It is that we love one another. And Paul, even knowing he heard the report of love from the church at Thessalonica, he says, I want to encourage you to love even more, to abound in love, that you would strengthen your hearts in holiness. God made a thinking that his love is love an outcome of our pursuit of holiness. Does our holiness result in a life of love? The wisdom that comes from the scriptures that we find in Proverbs reminds us again and again that life and love are not found in material things. 
Better is a bread crust shared in love. Better to find love than to cast the blame of brokenness. It may be better to live alone, as the scripture says, than with a contentious wife, but I say, better to heal what's broken and live together. Better that love has been and always will be the cornerstone of the Christian faith. You see, when we use the word love, it is the word of the Christian faith. It is what centers us in knowing who God is. It is what reminds us of who Jesus is in our life. That God is this God of love. And that love is poured out with you and me. For without love, our faith is powerless. Without love, our hope is worthless. And without love, our gatherings will always be fruitless. But nonetheless, with God, there is love. And with love, there is always will be life. A Christ-filled life. One that is pleasing to God as we gather together. My prayer for you and for me is that the riches of God's love grow more and more each day within each and every one of us. That we recognize how blessed we are with God's love that we cannot help but to give it away. May it be so. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have you ever committed your life to Jesus Christ? Have you made that decision? Wonderful, wonderful that you've made a decision for love. Today I want to invite anyone here today that has never made that commitment to love to profess your faith in Jesus Christ and come. If today you wish to come and to join the church or pray at the altar, you are invited to come as we stand and sing our final hymn. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. Let's sing all three verses of a whole. Oh, how I love Jesus, so let's stand and sing.
then it would be easier to love God, right? That this God of love is one that, that loves you so much, more than anything you can imagine. So I pray that God's love dwells on you richly. That God's love showers you over and over again. And the richness of His grace empowers you to be a person, a couple, a brother, a sister, a father, a son, to be one of love today and every day. Amen. Please be seated. It is